welcome back. Before we get on to aspects of hybrid vehicles, we will clarify some of the jargons that are going to be utilized in the subsequent lecture. So this is a, a brief primer on vehicle dynamics. The first term we will like to clarify is the traction force. Traction force is the force that makes the vehicle move at a constant velocity or at varying velocities. So traction force is related to the torque that is produced by the internal combustion engine. This is that term. It is also related to the gear ratio. Gear ratio relates the angular velocity of um, the internal combustion engine or the this torque to the torque produced on the wheel. So this is related to the efficiency of the drive uh, train. We have introduced this schematic in the introductory lecture. So all the power that is generated by the engine is not transmitted to the drive uh, line. There is some inefficiency and this inefficiency is indicated by this term. So this relates to the efficiency of the uh, drive uh, train. So you can look at the introductory lecture on introduction to a hybrid vehicle in this series, or you can look up some um, literature on automobile, um, working of automobile to get a better understanding of this formula. This refers to the radius of the wheel. Moving further, if the vehicle is moving up a slope. So here the resistance is going to increase because in addition to the resistance uh, due to the motion, because of the frictional forces on the road, there is an additional resistance due to gravity. So the force, road resistance force is indicated by this term is the sum of two terms. The first term, let's say due to gravity, is this times this, where m sub v refers to the mass of vehicle and alpha is indicated here. So imagine a vehicle moving up this slope. So this is a simple uh, free body force diagram from your high school uh, physics. So f sub F refers to the frictional force. So this is the frictional coefficient. And again, alpha is indicated here. In addition to these two resistive forces, there is this additional force due to air drag. So again, this is must be, you must be familiar with this from your elementary fluid mechanics class. So the resistive drag is... Uh, given by this formula, where this is this refers to the density of air, this is the drag coefficient, area of the vehicle, velocity of the vehicle. So moving further, if you apply Newton's second law, uh, this is mass times acceleration, is the sum of all forces, which we have the terms we have provided in the previous slide. At constant velocity, when there is no acceleration, we can use this formula because the traction force will be equal to all the resistive forces, the force due to drag, gravity, and friction. When there is constant acceleration, we can integrate this equation um, to get the time taken to move from velocity v1 to velocity v2 under constant acceleration. 
this this obtained by simple integration again by defining based on the definition of velocity we can also get to the distance traveled um within uh this time uh, uh, slot when the velocity goes from v1 to v2 this is just high school physics on how to get this time and distance so the main thing to understand are this term um this is the way the power is conveyed to the wheel first the in the power is generated in the internal combustion engine it is transmitted through the torque generated because of the operation of internal combustion engine eventually it is transmitted uh, as the torque to the wheel it is also related to this alpha which we have defined in the previous slide it refers to the gradation in the slope in the next brief lecture we will look at the narrow window of efficiency of internal combustion engine thank you